What's up everybody? This is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner. Today I'm going to be reviewing a much requested speaker to review, the Serwin Vega LA165. I purchased these speakers with Patreon money. They retail for about $270 per pair currently via Amazon. And the idea was that if they worked out to be pretty decent speakers, you know, I'm not expecting a lot for $270, then I would gift them to one of my Patreon members. But these are going to go back and here's why. The overall sound of these speakers is definitely not neutral. Now, taking into account the fact that Serum Vega users typically are expecting higher sensitivity speakers with, I would assume, maybe some brightness and some extra punch, well, they kind of fulfill those desires, except for the high sensitivity, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. These speakers definitely have some punch to them. Nice, solid thump to them but it's not extended bass. It's just right in the mid bass region around 100 to 120 Hertz. So there's some extra kick to it, but it's not that guttural bass impact. As far as that goes, it doesn't exist. You're absolutely going to have to have a subwoofer if you want any content below, I would say about 60 Hertz in most rooms. Now you can put these speakers closer to the wall to give you a little bit more lifted bass. And in that regard, it might actually work to resolve some of the other issues which namely is the hollow mid-range. If you like a neutral speaker, if you like a speaker that maybe has warm mid-range, this is definitely not the speaker for you. It has about a two to three decibel cut right through the mid-range where the female and male vocal fundamentals lie. So if you're looking for that, it doesn't exist in this speaker. The other thing that this speaker also does not have is I would call it attack, clarity, or dynamicism in the upper mid range. And this is evident via a dip around two to four kilohertz. The lack of this results in, maybe if you hit a snare, you have a little bit of a blink factor to it, is what I like to call it. That blink factor doesn't exist. Saxes don't quite have that zing to them. And while this area missing is okay, and I would rather have it than having a peak in that region because a peak would be just too much, it's lacking that factor, which I think most people that are coming after this speaker probably expect. Now, the one thing that it also does have besides that lower mid bass punch is the upper high frequency is probably what some would consider detailed or high resolution. And simply all that is, is a bump in the upper region of the treble. I consider this sibilant or edgy. To me, it was just a little bit too much. Now, it's not as bad as some of the other speakers I've reviewed. Your standard Focal, Klipsch, Martin Logan, those speakers tend to have more boost in the top end than these. Even some Sonus Fibers that I've reviewed somewhat recently also exhibit that. So in that regard, it's not terrible, but it's more than I personally like. And overall, my subjective assessment is this is not a speaker that I'm a fan of because it's too far from neutral. With that in mind, let's talk about some of the specs. This speaker is a passive bookshelf speaker with a quoted frequency response range from 33 to 20 kilohertz. Power handling is spec'd at 150 watts. Sensitivity is 90 decibels at one watt, one meter. Impedance is stated at four to eight ohm. Dimensions are approximately eight by 13.7 by 12.4 inches or 203 by 347 by 315 millimeters. Weight is approximately 29.8 pounds, which is 13 and a half kilogram. The spec of 33 Hertz extension. See, this is frequency response specs annoy the piss out of me because they'll say some range to some range, but that doesn't mean anything, especially if they don't bound it by some plus or minus three decibel. This saying 33 Hertz, that's a wish and a dream because the F3 is closer to about 67, maybe 65 Hertz. And the F10 is around 40 something Hertz. And it's gonna be more in the data in a little bit. Now the overall build quality of the speaker, I think is actually pretty nice. The internal wall is filled with some batting or some cotton type material that you use to typically dissipate internal reflections or standing waves. Overall, this is a win. The midwoofer is a stamped steel basket, which isn't the end of the world, but it does indicate maybe a lack of high quality but these are $270 a pair. Okay, that's fine. The real issue, however, is the fact that this midwoofer is not crossed over low enough or steep enough to mitigate some pretty significant modal ringing. So basically, 
the cone is vibrating out of phase with the rest of the cone at certain frequencies. Now this causes you to have dips and peaks higher in frequency, which alter the overall tonality of this speaker and creates issues that I'll talk about in a little bit. The tweeter seems fine, the port seems fine, and the cabinet itself seems fine. Again, I'm factoring in the overall price of these speakers at $270 a pair, so I'm not gonna nitpick on them too hard, but the end result is subpar for me. And if I compare this to a pair of $250 Polk XT20 speakers, those, at least in my opinion, sound so far and beyond better than these Serum Vega LA-165s that it isn't even a thought to me to recommend those Polks over these Serum Vegas. So now let's do the sound clip. Starting off with the frequency response, you can see that the average sensitivity is 86.2 decibels. Servo Vega rates the speaker at 90 decibel at one watt, one meter sensitivity. And they give an impedance spec of anywhere from four to eight ohms. So if I take the high end and I say eight ohms, then one watt is equivalent to 2.83 volts. And as you see in my measurement, 2.83 volt one meter shows us that we have a sensitivity of 86.2 decibels or about four decibels lower than the Servant Vega spec. If we assume that they're looking at four ohms, then their sensitivity rating of 90 decibels at one watt, one meter would be about 93 decibels at 2.83 volts. So no matter how you slice it, I'm coming up with a value that is a good bit lower than what their specification calls for. Base extension, F3 is at 67 Hertz, F10 is at 47 Hertz. If I want to figure out where their 33 Hertz is, you're around here somewhere. I'm just ballparking it. So let's say that's 67. 86 minus 67 is about 19 decibels. So this speaker is roughly 19 decibels down at their spec range of 33 Hertz. The CEA 2034 data set gives us a snapshot at the overall performance of the tonality of the speaker and whether or not applying EQ can resolve some of the non-linearities. So if you want a neutral speaker, can you apply EQ to certain frequencies to bring the speaker into a more neutral sound? For the most part, the directivity looks all right through the lower mid-range and upper mid-range, but then you get into the lower treble, upper treble region where we see this pretty significant dip through here. Now, any non-linearity in this blue or even this red line indicates to us an area where EQ is not gonna be helpful. This is the estimated in-room response, which gives us a good idea of how the speaker will sound in most average rooms. And this line indicates how I overall heard the speaker with some call out notes. So in my room, in room extension was about 60 Hertz or so, quick punchy bass, hollow mid range, scooped attack or detail, and then peaking treble region has a bit of sibilance. And if you like those things, at least now you have an idea of where they come from. Burst decay shows extended ringing in the mid range and upper mid range area. Horizontal contour plot gives us an idea of the radiation and how why does this speaker play out into a room? Some people may like a speaker that plays very wide because it gives a more sense of envelopment. Some people might like a speaker that's really narrow. So maybe about plus or minus 30 degrees. The more narrow, the less room involvement there is. And maybe in a very lively room, you may want a more narrow presentation. This speaker kind of hits where I like for the most part around 60 to 70 degrees. And ideally what you have is this darker red being pretty linear. Whenever it jumps out, that indicates a portion where the sound that's sent off to the side of the speaker is louder in level than the sound that's sent directly to your ears. In those cases, it is best to absorb those frequencies because you can simply not equalize that sound. If you were to try to bring that down in level, then you're also bringing down the direct sound and that creates its own issues, okay? So you need acoustic absorption to resolve those kind of issues and at $270 a pair, I'm gonna guess that you probably don't care about doing that. So just keep this in mind. As far as where you need to be sitting, tweeter level. Put your ears at the tweeter level for best overall sound. What about distortion? All right, well, we see significant distortion starting to rise around one to two kilohertz where our ears are pretty dang sensitive. And if I step up to a higher output volume at 96 decibels at one meter, which is high, but that's in the near field. If you back two, four, 
I don't know, however many other meters you want to go, then this sound is getting lower in level. So let's look at 96 decibels. We've got some peaking around 1K and then some mid bass area excessive distortion. Now this could result in some warm mid bass sound, but also remember that you've got the mid range that is lacking in overall response linearity. So you're gonna have some difference there in your mid bass versus your mid range sound. And it's a pretty significant disparity. What about using a non tone, like real music? People say, well, what about with real music? Well, this is kind of what you got right here. Multi-tone distortion. This black line represents 3% distortion threshold, which I think is a good average number to say, all right, above this, we're gonna have issues. So when you go to 96 decibels with this speaker, you're gonna have graininess and you're gonna have an overall sound that is very much not pleasing throughout the mid range and the upper mid range. It's gonna be problematic for both reasons. And if you use a subwoofer to high pass this speaker, it will bring down some of that mid range distortion, but not all of it in the upper mid range area like you see here. Long term multi tone distortion testing shows about one decibel of compression in the lower mid range, mid bass region but about two decibels of enhancement. So it's actually gonna sound louder in the higher frequency area. I've not seen that before. And to be clear, I'm not saying it's a good thing. So then if we look at instantaneous compression, we lose about three decibels, more than three decibels on the low end. But you know, this is kind of what I expect for a speaker of this price. The thing that stands out to me, and I don't recall seeing this before either, is that I have about three decibels of expansion, again, in the higher frequency. So regardless of how I test it, if I'm testing for long-term or short-term instantaneous dynamic compression, I'm pretty much getting the same results where the lower treble region is sounding louder due to some distortion. What about impedance? Will your AVR drive this? Will you need a separate amplifier? Well, I think most amplifiers are gonna be okay. I also wanted to point out a lot of resonances. So we got a resonance here, that's an enclosure resonance at around 300. We've got a resonance just around one kilohertz. And then we've also got a minor resonance around 700 hertz. Now this right here, that's due to the midwoofer cone and the surround next to it. So the surround is the, the bubble looking part that sticks up over the, over the driver, okay? So as the cone is moving, you've got the surround that's kind of helping keep the cone in place. Well, if the cone is moving at a certain frequency and that surround is moving at a certain frequency, if there's an issue in how they're joined, then they can move essentially out of phase. And that's what you wind up with in this region. Now I know this because I tested the midwoofer on its own right here this is the midwoofer on its own i still see that resonance and the fact that you have higher distortion second order distortion and you have higher compression right in those two regions those are pinpoint factors for a cone edge surround resonance now also looking at this midwoofer itself here is the cone ringing evidence now i'm going to do a very quick comparison in overall linearity this is the servo vega speaker and this is the polk xt20 that i talked about earlier while the Polk XT20 is not perfect, you can see that it's a lot better, has roughly the same sensitivity, practically the same. Now the difference on the top end is what I don't like. So if it's me, I'm grabbing EQ and I'm bringing this down, or I'm taking the total balance of my receiver and I'm just tweaking that down a little bit. The F3 is at 63 Hertz, F10 is at 42 Hertz. So the extension of this speaker is lower than the Serwin Vega. And then in terms of distortion, this is the Serwin Vega and this is the Polk. So the Polk overall, is a better speaker, at least in these metrics. And in my opinion, overall period, the Polk is the better value and the better performer. So that's it for this review of the Servum Vega LA-165. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. If you're looking at this speaker just from the nostalgia perspective and you want something that goes kind of loud in your living room, look, I'm not gonna knock it, but it's certainly not my cup of tea. And I think that you can certainly do better for the price, but you buy what you wanna buy, okay? And with that in mind, I have a slew of generic affiliate links in my description section below. If you appreciate this review and you appreciate this kind of information and you wanna keep it going, please consider using any of those affiliate links. Click the link, it'll go to Amazon or Best Buy or Crutchfield or whatever. And then you just type in and buy whatever it is that you wanna buy. I earn a small commission from that, doesn't cost you anything extra. And that's what helps fund this channel, allows me to keep doing these kind of reviews. I will talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.